I want to be more like you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Make me more like you, Lord. Make me more like you, God. Make me more like you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you for your presence as in this place today. Father, you are perfect. You are holy. You are faithful and true. Lord, we long to live in your glory. We long to live in your glory. Oh, make us more like you, Lord. Even as you open up your word to us, make us more like you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you, choir. Thank you so much. God is working. Amen. You know, one of the marks of spiritual maturity is getting to the place where you recognize God at work. Recognize what God is doing. And you key into the, the, the moving of God at that particular time. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the master class. Amen. All right. So we are still looking at effective communication in the home. Effective communication. And again, the message is not just for married people. It's for single people as well. Because communication is what we do as human beings. You can't succeed in life if you don't know how to communicate. You can't succeed in life if you don't know how to communicate. So communication is one of the very foundations for, the, for your success as a human being. For your success as a human being. And then by the time you get married, you will find out that one of the critical things you must do every single day of your married life is communication. Learning to communicate with that partner that you are married to. Praise God. And we've uh, covered about two or three in this series of effective communication. I will not go back, but I just want to say that God wants our marriage to be different from the marriages of people who are not believers, right? Yes. He wants our marriages to be different. Totally different. Totally different. Totally different from the marriages of the people who are not believers. Completely different. Amen. Uh -huh. And if our marriage will be different from that of the world, we must get our minds transformed with the word of God. We must get... Because what is making their marriage what it is, first of all, is the fact that their spirits are dead and then the way they think. So now that I'm a child of God, now that I'm a Christian, if my marriage is going to be different, if my life is going to be different, I must get my mind transformed. I must get my mind transformed. I'd like us to read Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12 verse 2. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, don't communicate in your home like this world. But how will I communicate differently when I am renewed in my mind? How will I talk differently to my husband? How will I talk respectfully to my husband? How will I talk differently to my wife? How will I talk respectfully to my wife? It's by having my mind transformed. You know, generally, you know, out there in the world, they feel that a man should respect, a man should be respected by his wife. But there are many young men out there who feel that a, a woman doesn't have to be respected. Okay? Now, so if, when they get married, they will have a problem. 
Because they are going to be communicating their thoughts. You see, thoughts don't just fly out, uh, words don't just fly out of our mouth. Words are products of our thoughts. Amen. Our words that we communicate are first of all a product of our thoughts. So if I'm going to be able to communicate correctly, I must have the correct thought processes. So in order to help us, God says that I'm not to be conformed to this world, but I must allow God transform my mind, renew my mind, so that I can prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Please put it for us in Amplified. Do not be conformed to this world any longer. Don't be conformed any longer with its superficial values and customs. Be transformed and progressively changed. You see, the changing of our mind, the renewing of our mind is something that is progressive. That is why this master class has been set up. That's why churches, we have Bible study. That is why we have Sunday services, pastor preaches, because it is a progressive changing of our thought processes. You grew up thinking in a particular way. There is nobody when all of a sudden by tomorrow you are thinking correctly and communicating correctly the way you should in your home. So there has to be a progressive change in our thinking processes as you mature spiritually. Now, so that is to say, I cannot keep spiritual maturity one side and say, I don't really want spiritual maturity. I just want to change my mind. The two must go together. Amen. I said, Amen. So you must go for spiritual maturity. Because the more mature you are spiritually, the more correctly you will talk. Amen. The more much, am I, am I saying the truth right there? Yeah. Now, so the more mature you are spiritually, the more correctly you will talk. All right. So it says, as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes. So you are focusing on godly values and ethical where are my attitudes? Amen. So not every attitude that people have is correct or ethical. So when you get born again, you become a Christian. God say, come, 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 come. The way you they think. Eh? Say now, so you go to talk to your husband. It's not like that. Come and sit down. Let me tell you how to talk. You husband, come. You that think that uh, wife, not just uh, property, when I don't buy, keep for house. Come, let me change your mind so that you will see how you're supposed to think about your wife so that you can talk to her in the way that your marriage will work. Amen. So if my marriage is going to be different, I must allow God to change my mind. What is the will of, what the will of God? And I will not be able to prove for myself what the will of God is, that which is good acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. In his plan and purpose for you. Now, please, how many of you remember Jeremiah 29, 11? What does it say? I know the plans I have for you. So, God has plans and purposes for your life. And part of that plan is that when you get married, your marriage should work. Amen? That's part of the good plan he has for you. That's part of the good plan he has for you. And if that marriage will work the way it's supposed to be, he said, come and sit down. I must instruct you so that your mind will change. So let's um, look at part of the transformation today. Amen. So you tell yourself, say, my, my mind has to change. Oh, say, say, my mind has to change. Touch that guy. Tell him, tell him your mind has to change. Three people, help me tell him, your mind has to change. Five people, tell him for me, your mind has to change. If I the whole church, help me tell him. You're not going to sleep again. 
I was trying to help you. All right. So let's go to First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 12. It says, Let no man despise thy youth. Let no man despise thy youth. Now, please listen. In the kingdom of God, it doesn't matter when you marry in terms of whether you married at 20, 25, any age. Don't just let anybody despise your youth. Okay? He said, but be thou an example. In the plan of God, eh, your marriage as a Christian marriage is supposed to be an example. It's supposed to be an example. So, when somebody comes visiting, stays in your house for one week, they see the way you are communicating and they're like, now, wow, 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 wow. They are learning from the communication that is going on in the home. They are learning from what they are seeing. It's wowing them. And they're like, we didn't know this kind of thing was possible. So, one of the things you must set as a target, whether you are single or married, is that my marriage has to be an example. Amen. My marriage just has to be an example. That is the will of God. So it says, oh, they took it off. So it says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word. In word. In word. In word. In how you talk. That conversation there is not talking about speaking. It's talking about your lifestyle. So in word, in your lifestyle, and in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Praise God. So your life has to be an example. The way you talk as a person has to be an example. The way you communicate with people, you have to be an example. Praise God. So if our homes would be different, our philosophy of life our philosophy of marriage, our principles of life, our principles of marriage must be different. We can't hold the same philosophy as the world and expect to have different marriages. So our philosophies must be different. Our principles, the principles that guide our homes must be different from that of the world. And please, listen, listen, I mean, listen. The Western world, Oyibo people, they are not the standard. Say amen. America is not the standard. Go and look at many of their marriages. In shambles. Many of them are in their third marriage, fourth marriage. In fact, I had one that was in his twelfth marriage. Twelve. Don't marry twelve women. Eh? I didn't follow you. I mean, don't marry one dozen. One dozen. And he's still not happy. Still not happy. And the sad thing is that some of us, we watch these people, we hear because they have, some of them are very vocal. They are talking, not like this, not like this, not like this. And you want to model your life after a person whose marriage has failed. Excuse me, as I'm here now, if I want to ask business advice, I am not going to ask advice from the person who started business and his business failed. Will you do that? I, I, I want to start a business. Then the person I want to go as my mentor, to mentor me in business, is the one who, whose business failed. Is that a good move? No. If I want a successful business, I must look for somebody whose business has succeeded. Then how come I want a successful home and I'm looking at uh, film actors? I'm looking at models. I'm looking at musicians whose marriages have collapsed. They are the ones I want to run my life by my, the principles of my life and the principles of my marriage. No. If I want my marriage to work I must settle down for the principles of God. And I have an announcement for you. Principles of God are higher. The ways of God are higher. Say my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts. His ways are higher. Amen. 
So when you embrace the ways, I'm, I'm just setting, yeah, I'm setting you up for where I'm going this, this, this morning. So when you embrace the ways of God, what happens is that you have embraced superior intelligence. You have embraced superior intelligence. You have embraced a path that cannot fail. Because God cannot fail. Amen. So he says our marriages must be example and that we are not to copy the standards of this world. Say amen. Now for those of you writing, I want you to write this down. That marriage is a call to serve, not to be served. Marriage is a call to serve, not a call to be served. It's a call to serve, not a call to be served. Now, that is one attitude of mind that we must all have in engaging with God's word. So, I'm going into my marriage not because I'm looking for somebody to serve me. I'm going into marriage because I want to go and serve. Imagine that two people get married and this one has the attitude, I'm going in there to serve. Uh, yo, stand up. I'm going in there to serve. And the other one comes in and says, I'm going in there to serve. How do you think that that marriage will be? Heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. Because nobody's coming in with any uh, uh, um, selfish motivation. I, I, I want to be served. I want to be served. I'm going to serve. I'm going in there to serve. Go and stand at the back. I'm going in there to serve. And that's what marriage is. Amen. <laughs> I heard a funny story. Maybe I should just gist you that one before I continue. Oh, now today like gist. So one teacher was in class one day. And he called. He was just uh, playing around. He called one boy. Tony! Tony stood up. What do you want to be in the future? Tony did not even think too time. He said, I want to be a multi pillionaire Wow, that's good. He now turned to the other side of the class. Alero, what do you want to be in the future? Without thinking two times, I want to be Tony's wife. <laughs> eh? So that I will make I just go collect. Uh -huh. Since Tony wants to be multi billionaire, I don't need to bother myself. Now, so <laughs> if you enter marriage with a mind of I'm just going there to collect, your marriage will not work. It has to be mutual service. Mutual giving of ourselves to, to, to our, each other. Okay, so the primary purpose of marriage is to serve. To serve the purpose of God. Please, many times when we think about marriage, eh, we make it about us. It's not about us. We are there to serve the purpose of God. You don't even understand what God is working at. That when your people in your neighborhood, they say, this uh, Christian marriage, Christian marriage, what are you even saying? Say, don't worry. As you don't read Bible, you don't understand. Follow me. And he take you to in my house. Say, go and watch he and his wife. That is the Christian marriage I am talking about. In Colossians 3, the Bible says, whatever we do, whether in word or in deed, we must do it for the glory of God. So that marriage is not about you first of all. It's about how can I give God the highest glory in this marriage. So when you have that kind of mindset, there are many things you will overlook. Am I right? There are many things you will overlook because you know, if I follow as it in the waka, it will not glorify God. For neighbors to come and gather to start settling us. No, it will not glorify God. So, when I get married, I am going in there to serve not just my partner. I'm also going there to serve the purpose of God. Amen. I said amen. So, your question that you will keep asking as you get married is, how can I make life better for my partner how can i make life better for my partner just imagine that every marriage the husband is asking 
how can I make my life better for my wife? And the wife is asking, how can I make life better for my husband? That marriage will be heaven on earth. That marriage will be heaven on earth. And that is precisely how God wants us to think. How can I make life better for this woman I married? You know, once you think like that, there are many questions that people ask that will not be asking. For example, we are looking at the uh, chores at home for a young couple. The, the chores at home, how can I make life easier for my wife? So I'm not saying, ah, don't marry wife. She go cook. She go clean. She go even wash my clothes, wash my dirty boxers, iron my clothes, uh, clean the house, take care of the children. Then in the night, we continue on the bed. While I'm doing all of, while she's doing all of that, I'll sit down with remote control. After all, let me go work since morning. How can I make life better for my partner? And the illustration I always give, I'll give that then. What I want to do today is just look at some scriptures that have to do with how we should talk. About if just a few scriptures, then you can ask your question and we'll be done today. If you were a woman, I'm talking to the brothers now. If you were a woman, you are not a man. You were a woman. And, okay, no, let me not give that illustration. Let me give another one. Let's talk to the brothers first. As a man, assuming you have a very beautiful daughter that you literally adore, you just love this girl. She's growing up, growing up, becoming a beautiful princess. Then she finishes school. One day she comes, says she has found somebody, gets married. Question. If the man she marries treats her the way you are treating your wife right now, Will you be happy? If the answer is yes, I'll tell you by all means, go ahead and continue to treat your wife that way because you are doing the right thing. But if you notice in your heart that, no, 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 there are areas, the way I'm engaging with my wife, I would not like that young man to even try it. Then you have to change in that area. It means whatever you are doing there is not honoring God. Is that clear? Is that Okay. Okay, so let's talk to the women. So as a woman, you have this beautiful, handsome, energetic young man that you call your son. Oh, and you love him so much. You love this, your son. And some of you already have sons. Then this boy goes to get married to this beautiful girl. It was a nice wedding, everything. Question. If that girl begins to treat that son that you love, the way you are treating your husband right now, will you be happy? Will you be happy? If you say, wow, yes, yes, that's what I want for my son, then go ahead. It means you are doing everything good. But if there are areas, the way you are treating that man, you know that if they treat your son like that, it go, it go, it go, it go be like sword in your heart. Stop it. It means that whatever you are doing in that regard, God is not glorified. Amen. I said amen. This is just a little litmus test for us to check. Because whoever you married is also somebody's child. Am I saying the truth? It's also somebody's child. And don't forget that you are, you are just a, a custodian. God just allowed you into that person's life for his purpose to be done. Amen. Okay, so let's look at some scriptures that talk about how we should talk. Let's start with Psalm 19. We'll go from Old to New Testament, back and forth. Psalm 19, verse 14. What I would like you to do is to write down some of these scriptures, really. Write them down so that later you can meditate on them. Psalm 19, verse 14. This is a prayer. And it's a psalm of David. There's many things that have made David eh, to be a man after God's heart. When you study the life of David, you will know why God anointed him so much. You will know why God set him aside. 
Look at a prayer point. There are many prayer points you have to be praying. If you see them in the Bible, it's just avoided. They are not our own prayer points. Most times our own prayer points are breakthrough. Look at prayer points. Can we read the prayer point? Oh God, let the words that proceed out of my mouth, let the thoughts, the meditations of my heart, the one nobody they see. <laughs> let me tell you something. God is a wise God though. Do you know Suppose God do one, say, we they see people thought, Jesus Christ. Some of them are even waiting at the thing here right now. So we go wrong. So, when you sit down, please, please, we are going somewhere. When you sit down to think about the partner you married, what is your thought process? Because whatever words will be coming out of your mouth will be product of those thoughts. So, David didn't just come to say, let me speak the right words. Because words don't just come out from nowhere. Words are products of thoughts. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, that's why we started by talking about transformation of our minds. So, please listen. If you are going to communicate properly with your partner, you have to begin to check your thoughts towards that person. Are they positive thoughts? Are they positive thoughts? Are they good thoughts? Are they, every time you think about that person, there are always thoughts of regret. Why I can't marry this person? My daddy was teaching last Sunday. You know? Uh, contentment in marriage. Have you gotten to this point where the there's so much discontent in your heart that it has even gotten to almost disgust. Do you know that once that is your thought process, when you open your mouth, your mouth, the words can never be right. So it has to start from inside. Amen. So it's important what we are thinking about our partners. It's important what we are thinking. And so if you notice, you can sit down. If you notice... But if you want to keep standing, that's fine. If you notice eh, that the, my consistent thinking about my partner is not correct, forget about what the person is doing. It's not about what the person is doing, first of all. Because marry, you don't marry. Am I right? Eh, you're already married, for those of us that are married. So God, help me to think correctly towards this man, towards this woman. Praise God. Not sitting every day and say, Oh, Jagalio. So na 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 hey God, what 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 what's a terrible mistake? What a terrible mistake. And do you know that if every day you keep telling yourself, What a terrible mistake, there is no way you will open your mouth and say the right things. So that thought has to change, that thinking has to change. You must ask God to help you to think correctly. Please listen. One of the things you can actually pray as far as this scripture is concerned is, Father, eh, help me to love my husband. Help me to love my wife. It's a valid prayer point. It's a valid prayer point. Because of the depth of love that God has for us. Go and check the Bible. He never talks to us. He never describes us in negative adjectives. Never. Sometimes even as rebellious as we are. Because of his love towards us. So he said, no, 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 no. And they talk to my wife like this because of what she did do. No, 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 no. There's something wrong inside. So the psalmist said, let the words of my mouth, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable. Proverbs 10 verse 19. Proverbs 10 verse 19. Oh. <laughs> In the multitude of words, there wanted not sin. But he that 
refraineth his lips is wise. This is how we should live as believers. Please put it up for me in good news. Good news. Everybody read it. You see all those pata 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 especially when something is happening in the house that you are not quite happy. Plenty talk. You go commit sin. And the Bible they talk. He said, but a wise man is the one who learned to keep quiet. You think that is by talking, talking, and your wife go change. No. The Bible says the person that is wise is the one that learns to restrain himself from talking. Praise God. You know, <laughs> you know there are some people there. Eh? You employ this uh, girl staying with you or working in your shop or whatever. The girl never do anything. You go start to talk. You go talk, 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 talk. As you they talk, it they accelerate. As you they talk, the Bible says you are not wise. Because the more you talk, the more likely you are to commit sin. How many of you know that this scripture is correct? Eh? Have you experienced in your life? That sometimes there's something when you don't even plan to talk. Over talking, before you know, it don't drop. Then you go back and start repenting. And then you go back and start trying to uh, ask for forgiveness. I don't mean her like that. I don't mean her like that. Instead of going back to say, I don't mean her, not just talk her. That's how God wants us to do. The more you talk, the more likely to sin. Especially when that other person has done something you don't like. That is the worst time to open your trap and just be talking. It's the wrong time. Because you are going to be talking out of frustration. You are going to be talking out of... Praise God. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18 verse 13. He that answers a matter before he hears it is this folly and shame unto him. He that answers a matter before he hears it. When I teach communication in, in, in class, one of the things I tell my students, it is a big sign of disrespect that I am discussing with you. Eh? You have made your point. I'm trying to make my point. You're caught. I try to make my point. You, you, you have not heard the matter. You are already answering it. The Bible says you are being foolish. When you keep interrupting somebody in any kind of discussion, it may not even be husband and wife, but you know there are some people that just have that habit. They're not they feel they wait, make the other person finish. You must cut in. You know what you are communicating? You are communicating as if to say, I'm wiser than you. What you want to say is not really important. I know that... No need for you to talk. Let me talk. And when you keep communicating that, it is something that will not build a good relationship. If that answers a matter before he hears it, it is foolishness. Allow the person finish. Stop interrupting. Amen. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting. How many of you know somebody who does that? If the person is sitting next to you, don't say anything. Don't look, just look straight. If the person is your partner, just say amen. Ah, you are saying amen. I didn't say you. <laughs> amen. It's, 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 it's not good. Even in your workplace, even subordinates, allow the person to talk. And you know, one of the problems in communication and why there is miscommunication is the fact that as I'm talking, you are talking. As you, they talk. Instead of me to listen, to understand what you are trying to say, I am not listening. No. As you are talking, I am already calculating what I will say. So, sometimes I'm listening to two people having this argument. I called two of them. I said, excuse me. Do you people know that two of you are on the same side? They say, eh. 
I don't know what you are arguing about. You see, the reason why it is like that is that while one person is talking, the other person is not listening, is calculating response. How do you want to respond to what you have not heard? So the Bible says, he that answers the matter before he hears it, that person is a fool. Why are you answering? You've not heard what I have to say. You already have an answer. Praise God. I said, praise God. Okay, so let's go quickly to Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12, verse 18. Proverbs 12, verse 18. He said, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. Please, can you uh, help us with good news? Good news, please. Everybody read. Thoughtless words. Thoughtless words. And in, in our homes, eh, because this is the person you live with every day, there is uh, uh, this tendency of Ojefia. Go and check the dictionary. What is Ojefia? See finish. See finish. So whereas, let, let me sp speak to us women. Whereas as a woman, if you wanted to talk to your boss in the office, you know that you go sit down, you go think and you go think and you go arrange and how you go put the thing. Because it's your boss. But when you want to talk to your husband, thoughtless words. You just fling words. Just fling words. And do you know that the Bible says that thoughtless words, eh, the wound, they deep. The wound, they deep. The wound they did. Many times, when we think that we are trying to encourage our husbands to do better, and we are just throwing thoughtless words, comparing our husbands with uh, Jennifer, husband, Mama Titilayo, husband, all those people, they are deep wounds. They are deep wounds. Nobody wants to be compared with another person disfavorably. Eh? Think now by yourself. Would you like someone to say, Stan, my darling, what's your name? Ijoma, Ijoma. You find Shao, but that your friend, eh? That your friend is a bomb. Now, the same style, now do, but it not be like the same style because her own, the way it is, eh, is stand. Excuse me, is there a way Ijoma will be happy with that comparison? There is no way you compare somebody disfavorably with another and the person will be happy. But we do it all the time in our homes. Compare our husbands with other men and not favorably, disfavorably. We compare our wives. Thank you, darling. We compare our wives. See you, see you, see you. You know they see how Sarah they do. Even if you wanted her to be like Sarah, those are not the words. Those are not the words. Praise God. There are words. Please. That's why the psalmist prays. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable. I don't want to finish talking. Eh? It'd be like, say, they take dagger and shook somebody's heart. And then we now come to church. When the glory come. God say, which glory? Come here. If he's even come himself, he's not coming you to you. Because the way you talk to your husband today glory cannot come. The way you talk. You know, sometimes uh, you can tell your husband something, eh? Because he's a man, he may not cry. But the eye read it was like a dagger. And one way is when you want to make your husband feel like a failure. Oh my God, the dagger is deep. Because in the heart of every man, every man wants to be a provider. Every, a man who is not able to provide for his family, not be even you when be the wife, be, 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 now you go talk, even the man, they feel him. 
So if you wanted to encourage him, you would choose your words carefully. Careless words. Brother, sometimes you people speak careless words. A woman told me, he said, she got married to her husband and she's this busty person. At least, even if you not see the breast physically with your eye, you see her for inside cloth, you see the size. Before you agreed, say, now this woman you won't marry. She didn't come to propose to you, now you propose to her. They married, they reach out. Wedding night. Ah! What if it is? Now I am. Careless words. And the man now is coming now to, to, to cry to me. Say, the, the, the wife, the wife, you know, they agree they uh, pull clothes inside bedroom. The woman said, I can open. He can see anywhere from here down. But this place, when he say na yam, make it not they see yam. No, are you listening to me? Please listen. When the Bible says in Genesis 2, the last verse, that the, the, the man and his wife were both naked. They were not ashamed. Look at when Adam saw his wife for the first time. This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. You could see that unconditional acceptance. Amen. This one you don't have fat so. Eh? See your belly, see your belly, see your belly. Even if you wanted her to lose weight, those are not the words. Amen. Those are not the words. Careless words, they are like dagger. One, one, one young man came to see me sometime. The wife said, no, go marry again. We talk, talk, talk. What did happen? She got pregnant, she had a baby. After she had the baby, she put on some weight. It's not I said, the man go come. What if it be this now? I can't even take you out again. No? Because I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. You are just too fat. You are just too fat. He said, see, mommy, it was like torture. I, I hated myself because now I'm breastfeeding. I couldn't do anything to even lose the weight quickly. It, the man tortured me. He said, I can't stay with this man again. Of course, the marriage broke up. Careless words. Careless words. You want your wife to enter a bedroom, pull clothes without looking back. Be careful comments about her body. Be careful. Whether she get big breasts or small breasts or big uh, bacasio, small bacasio, that you marry her like that. Enjoy it. Praise God. Are we still in church? Be careful of your words. Careless words, they go deep. They go deep. And sometimes you'll be shocked that words that you spoke 10 years ago, thank God for forgiveness. So the best is don't forgive. Don't say, but sometimes the thing will just flash more. That's why you don't go, words are too powerful. Do you know that one of the things that we live into eternity are the words that we speak. Eh? You remember where he said that you will give account for every careless word. I don't know, we they read the Bible, we're not the serious with what we they read. As he said, God, they joke. He said, you will give account for every careless word that you spoke. Careless means non-producing, non-productive words. Why did you talk like that? What was it supposed to produce? Was that supposed to produce faith? Was that supposed to make the marriage better? Why did you say that? Okay. So. Let's go to the New Testament. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And verse 19. James 1.19 He says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, 
slow to speak and slow to get angry. Some brothers, they take this scripture out of context to say, the Bible doesn't say we should be slow to speak. So your wife can't say, honey, so and so and so and so. So I think I had a tinker for seven months. The Bible says we should be slow to speak. It's not that kind of one. Praise God. Part of communication in the home, man, is that women, they, they, see, I believe that in the heart of many women, eh, they really want to please their husband. They really want their husbands to be happy. They really want to do. But sometimes as a woman, you come to your husband and you say, honey, so and so and so and so and so. So are they thinker. Are they thinker one day, two days, one week, three weeks, three months, six months, and sometimes if the woman not bring the matter up again, you're not going to talk and make it. No. That's not what the Bible is saying. So what is the Bible saying? Good news. No, not the good news, brother. Version. Put it in good news. Remember this, my dear friends. Everyone must be quick to listen. You know, in communication, eh, listening is an art. You cannot answer correctly until you have heard correctly. And listening, oh, clap, 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 that was good. I want to enter. <laughs> listening is not a passive activity. Listening is an active activity. So, you cannot say, they talk now, they talk now. Not be here, they tell they're here. I bet they talk. And you put eye for us now. When a woman is talking to her husband, she wants that. Maybe they look each other eyeball to eyeball. No, say, I, I not, not be here, they tell they're here. I know some women do it too. I, they talk now, uh uh. See, when you are beginning to make the uh 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 uh, see, go and pray for God to help your heart. Go and pray for God to help your heart. And may I inform you? The grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence. Anybody with me? What do I mean by that? Do you know <laughs> that uh, sometimes uh, in those days when I go buy tomatoes, I they they price my tomatoes, my eyes still they, they roll around, they look all the table. They, I don't, they price this one successfully. All of a sudden, I've just seen one wearing red. Look fine. I just tell the woman, I say, and this woman is not happy again that I'm leaving her table. I go to the other side. Only to arrive there. Now distance, now I deceive my eye. I shame, I tell her, I can't come back. We are first prize. If you see any marriage that is working, eh, it's because the two people decided that it should work. They are working on it. So for you to sit there and say, yeah, this, no, this kind of marriage, I want, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, see, see, Tiro marriage. Cross, go Tiro side. <laughs> you go rob Tiro. <laughs> I like, I like it. This is, <laughs> it's my ginger partner. Praise God. So the point is this. The Bible says, these media people, what I want to take this thing to now? Put the scripture there for me. It's good news. Put it in good news. Everyone must be quick to listen. See, you cannot be a good communicator if you are not a listener. Because in when we teach about communication skills, one of the communication skills is listening. Listening skill. Without listening, you can't talk. So let everyone be quick to listen, but slow to speak. So it still goes back to the scripture we read before. Before I want to answer what you are saying, let me understand what you are saying. Slow to speak. And then, of course, when I'm slow to speak, I become slow to become angry. But once fire, fire for fire, before you talk, I don't talk, before you talk, I don't talk, before you talk. See, don't, don't do that. See, that is how they behave in the homes of people that don't know God. Eh? Before your husband talk one, you don't talk three. Before your wife talk three, you don't talk seven. 
he become competition who would the best talker. Best talker challenge. Talker, talk, talker, talk, talker, talk, talker, talk, talker, talk, talker, talk. And I don't know whether you played this game when you were small. There's one game we used to play when, you know, say we be a jackpacko. Eh? When we were small. Who go, who go touch last? Eh? I touch you last is the game. Some people, eh, in their life, eh, I, I talk, I talk, let me talk last. They must be the one to talk last. If not, the talk not go finish. Calm down. What about just keeping quiet and walking away? What about just keeping quiet and walking away? If you not talk, if you not reply that thing, one of your finger go cut come out. Slow to speak. When you are slow to speak, you'll be slow to get angry. Praise God. I think I have just two more scriptures, so let's go. Ephesians 4.29 Ephesians 4.29 Okay, I think three, three more scriptures rather. Ephesians 4.29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers. Good news. Everybody read. Every time you want to talk to anybody, that includes your partner. This thing I want to say, will it do good? Communication. Will it do good? Don't use harmful words. And harmful words will be any kind of words that is abusive. See your head. Don't even get sense. Doesn't it make me marry you, this kind of idiotic person. The day when devil push you enter my path, oh God, may the day be cursed. Don't use harmful words. And those and harmful words, you know, one woman was so angry in Abuja. He just opened him up. He tell the husband, "What is anything when you can't find for Abuja? You not go get time in the name of Jesus. How can you be swearing?" For your partner. How can you be swearing? Don't use harmful words. Don't use harmful words. I don't know why this thing is just coming to my heart. It's not in the line of what I'm teaching. But what is coming to my heart now eh, is that there are men here that are struggling financially right now. And God is saying, it's not going to be long when the story will change. I saw a video a couple of days ago. Now one woman, oh, she was just shouting, get out of my house, get out of this house, I don't marry again. He break television, break everything. Hey, I don't marry again. I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. The husband was begging, I said, lie, 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 lie. Look at you, you are a lazy man. The husband said, how am I a lazy man? I had a job. I was taking care of this house until I lost my job. Just recently. So this short time when you just take care of the family, now don't they become lazy man, useless man. This short time, baby, calm down now. This will be okay. Say, no, 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 no. I'm getting a divorce. And the, the, no matter what the man said, he said, out of here. Say, so see television when I buy one million. Now you break even if you say you will not want to do it again, you can't first. Anyway, so as they were still trying, she, he was still begging. She was still saying no. There was a knock on the door. Two people enter. 
as they enter, they say, uh, uh, we were sent from the company. Ah, waiting. The man had even first called, waiting. He said, uh, we were sent to come and apologize to you. Say, the, what made them to sack you? It was wrong information. So, management said, we should come and apologize. And uh, that the salaries, when you miss, will pay it back. And you have been made to become the manager with official car. Everything. Now the woman just spring up. Oh, babe, God don't do it for us. <laughs> babe, God don't do it for us. The man said, do for who? As God do it, not be for me and for you. He do it for me. As we are talking now, those your load when you say you want pack, go and pack it. See, women, I wish you would know that the Bible says Ecclesiastes 4 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. I wish when that man is in that low state, I wish you can support him, pray with him, encourage him because change will come. Change will come. I have been young. Now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. You know what Job said? He said there is hope for a tree. Eh? Even when you cut it down, it will sprout again. At the scent of water, that tree will come up. Though your beginning may be small, your latter end shall greatly increase. Sisters, don't look at things as they are now. Your latter end shall greatly increase. So, when because of maybe the economic situation and everything, you are just running your mouth or pata, 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 pata. Later, when the man come blow, you go come, they adjust they adjust, you see, but that adjustment to heal the wound when you don't first cause. How do you know a true friend? He said, a true friend loveth at all times. A true friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. want to be a fair weather friend uh, because things are here then, ah, honey, honey, my baby, my this, my dad. Praise God. Don't use harmful words, but only helpful words. Use words that build up and provide what is needed. I will always talk about my, my elder sister that died, I think, a year or two ago. I love that woman. You can never visit Selena eh? and Selena not have a good word for you. I know because I'm busy, she, she, I, she trained me. I grew up in her house. She made a lot of sacrifices for me. So, uh, but I didn't go as often. I would send her things end of the month and stuff, but just in person. Sometimes even calling would take a while. So when I eventually call her, say, hey, mommy, I'm so sorry. She said, Vera, Vera, stop it, stop it, stop it. This is a busy world. And I know you are busy. Don't bother that you call me now, it's okay. She never, see, those kind of people, eh? Don't be saying, eh, -huh. the one you do, you say, mm -hmm. You always have, there's always something negative to communicate. I wish you can give, create that space where People will feel relaxed. You're not coming. You're not coming. Why are you not coming? Yeah, yeah. Ah. Even people are even, apart from husband and wife, people are even afraid to engage with you because there's always something. And you know, when you visit her, eh, say, ah, one thing that pained her before she died, when she was sick, you know, one thing that pained her is that she didn't reach here. Before she died. Abala Street. He said, now, within, within church, don't mean anything. God will come there. 
you are going to sit back home for wooden church. How may God call you? you know, she, she always had a word. She always had a word. And do you know that when you leave that place, eh, something will move you to, to, to want to move. Do you understand me? You are not encouraging your husband if every time is a negative word. Speak helpful words. Husband, I know say things be like this now, but I know say go change. But me, you marry. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. You have obtained favor. My name now, favor. Favor of God is upon your life. And do you know that when you speak like that, you are not only helping your husband, you are helping yourself. Praise God. All right. Uh, do I want to go back to the Old Testament? No, let's just do two New Testament and close. Colossians 4 verse 6. Colossians 4 verse 6. Colossians 4 verse 6. Please move now, media, to Colossians 4 verse 6. Everybody. No, no, go to, go to, uh -huh. everybody read. Don't be a boring communicator. Your speech should be pleasant. You know what is pleasant? They sweet to hear. Let me talk to my brothers. You know, part of your pleasant speech is, I love you. I really love you. You are very special. No, go, go and check Song of Solomon. I, I, I'm always telling brothers, so no 1,000 women, so no only in one, succeed. There was no riot, there was no revolt. Because Solo gets get utterance. <laughs> in Songs of Solomon, you know how he described his wife? He said, people they call their, their wives lily among lilies. You are not a lily among lilies. You are a lily among thorns. Which woman go hear that when he had no go spin? So the other people na shuku shuku. I am the only lily. See, if men, eh, we learn how to this these sweet words, eh, women like her. As I do, so I like her. I happened this morning, daddy. No, I've been here yesterday. No, no. Day before yesterday. So I can't dress up. If I want to sit in the iron my dress, he say, uh uh, mommy, where you they go today? Today na uh, office. So I say, uh, uh, I want waka. So they go office, go salon, go there and say, uh, oh, can't dress up. Please, if I don't say everything be okay. Glory to God. I can't go work. And true, true, everything be okay. If for office, ah, you look nice, you look nice. You know how office people they do. I go see doctor. Doctor say, now, wow, this woman, whether you wear English, whether you wear native, everything balanced. I said, now, God, I can't reach out. Nothing. So yesterday, now I can't put the complaint for table. I say, husband, that yesterday, everywhere I go, I saw this person say, you find her, you find her, you find her. They were all good. But only one matters to me. And that is the one I didn't hear. He said, but I tell you now, I said, which time? He said, but that's how when I tell you, say, where you they go? <laughs> when I tell you, say, where you they go? <laughs> I said, that one called me, say, you look fine. Let me tell you, brothers, listen. It doesn't matter. Let 1,000 men tell your wife that she looks fine. It is of no consequence. The one that matters to her is your own. The others have no consequence. It's, 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 it's of no consequence to me. But that my husband, 
So one of the things that we need to learn is how to speak pleasant words. Just make up your mind that nothing unpleasant will come out of my mouth. Okay? Pleasant words, sweet words. And the Bible says, hey, don't go find and call for me. Like a lily among thorns is my darling. You know, yeah, Old Testament, they don't they call darling. It's my darling among thorns. You see why Solo get 1,000 women? Only one when God say make you get. You know, if you look for words, package words, when you go to tell them. If not, even you go type them for inside your phone. Make you not forget. Riazan. Let me tell you another thing. You know, so a communication is on, not only verbal. Communication can be written. One of the biggest communication points that many men miss, and women too, but mostly because of this context, men. Now, you and your wife, there also, but she don't come out. Do you know it is powerful when you now send a message? I know that I saw you before you left the house, but I am missing you already. <laughs> Ooh, where are you? Fire. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So let our words be pleasant. Let our words be pleasant. Uh, hustling for life. Okay, see I'm now. He said hustling for life, not the make and remember all those things. Who you they hustle for? Okay, when you hustle all the money finish, the marriage don't scatter. What do you want to take the money to? Do and together. They do and they go. They, they do and they go. They do and they go. Eh? That's why we are in this class. Eh? That's why we are in this class. So, you just, just type and maybe before you sleep, you know, say now tomorrow you won't send the message, just type and down. Then you don't forget. So, when I did the same plaza, so she just there her uh, own that side. She just get message. Papa, check her. She, your wife go look her. Oh, where the wife? You not go look her. You the see I'm so. He said, no matter how he dressed, you're not able to look that side. Not be by touch, talk, talk, talk. I don't understand. Okay, yo. Uh huh. That is stop you from sending your own. Send your own message. I love you more than you realize. Send her. Uh, you are the only sugar in my tea. You are the only peppermint in my locker. You are the only coconut in my akamu. Anyhow, you want to send her, send her. Then when you don't send and finish, you just say, babe, I just sent 100k. Just go buy shoe. Oh, I just sent 5k. If not 5k, you feel afford. Do you know the kind sweetness? Man, money, they sweet another way. I can tell you. Make an old talk story. Let me just get back to my, to my scripture. Praise God. So, where did we read now? Go to Colossians. Have we read Colossians 4 6? What did he say? Okay, pleasant words. Okay, so let's do Colossians 3. No, let's go to that um, Proverbs 17, 27. Then we'll end up with Colossians 3. Proverbs 17, 27. Proverbs 17, 27. Those who are sure of themselves do not talk all the time. <laughs> Those who are sure of themselves do not talk all the time. Somebody made a comment. Let me not make it exactly because I don't really believe the concept the person was trying to push. So let me not make it. 
let me try to, but there's something about it. He said, now man, when he never, he not balance in a man who now need to introduce himself to a wife. Do you know I'm your husband? Do you know I'm your husband? I, I don't know so you've been my husband. Why do you need that introduction? No, I don't, I don't want to connect on to that side. Praise God. Those who are sure of themselves do not talk all the time. Please listen. Even in your personal work with God, don't talk all the time. Don't be always talking. Cha 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 cha. It reduces from your spiritual energy. Talk, talk, eh? It they deflates spiritual energy seriously. So don't talk all the time. People who stay calm, they have real insights. As we just see that situation, and if you are sensitive, eh, you will know when one kind of situation won't start for your house. Stay calm. Shifts come out for the situation. Let me give you the practical this thing. In our years of marriage, being married 34 years, I've noticed something. And it's not good. If the, everything is going smoothly, everybody's happy, marriage is going, and we are all doing very well, and then maybe daddy does something I feel that I didn't like. Once I accept it that I didn't like what he did, and I begin to respond like that in my heart, the atmosphere changes. And it will take time to now bring the equilibrium in that home again. So I told myself that I try as much as possible to avoid anything that would shake the equilibrium in the atmosphere of my home. Because to go back to make things calm again is hard. Learn to stay calm. Be everything that they respond. Not be everything that they talk. Not be everything that they talk. Praise God. So finally, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Give me Colossians 3, 13. Oh, I love this one. Be tolerant with one another. Husband and wife, be tolerant. Be tolerant with one another. Forgive one another whenever, whenever any of you has a complaint against someone else. If you have a complaint against your husband, forgive. A complaint against your husband, forgive. Be toler Tolerance means that we are not the same person. The way you they do things, the way they do things, not be the same. For example, if I want to wear this cloth, a little crease to me, I say the cloth is rumpled. I must iron it. Okay? This cloth, when that they wear, this morning, when they wear, I say, Daddy, this cloth look rumpled. He said, Now, nah, as the material, you know, there are some material, no matter how you iron, it will never. I say, ah, Even if that the material, it still look rumpled. But if you are not careful, a simple thing like that can degenerate. Are you listening to me? Say, hey, wait, hey, I'm not going to talk for this house again. Because no one I talk when they say they do anything. Allow the other person be a human being by themselves. Give them allowance. Give the other person space. Give them allowance to be who they are. There are some things that naturally that's not your bent. But if that's how the other person is, and it's not a simple thing, tolerate it. Forgive one another whenever any of you has a complaint. Do you know that your communication can never be right if you have unforgiveness in your heart? You can never, in a million years, communicate correctly. Get that thing from your nose. You can never in a million years communicate correctly once there's unforgiveness in your heart. You say forgive one another. You must forgive one another just as the Lord has forgiven you. 
Somebody say amen. Amen. Two questions only. One. If there's one, that's good. Okay, two. So let's start with you. Jeff. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I highlighted a lot of questions here. Some regarding marriage. And uh, the other two here is regarding uh, me being single. The regarding what? One, me being single. Um, growing up. Single, single. Okay, okay. The first one is from this Proverbs 18, verse 13, where it says, Answer before listening. For most parents, they feel most times they're always right. They don't allow the children to speak before they say, okay, it's what I say that's the law. Uh, so is it that it's only the elders that are supposed to, to speak why the children should listen? Then the second one is this Proverbs 12, 18. Wait, let me answer that one first. Uh, as parents, generally we have that kind of attitude. Because we feel that we are older, we are wiser. We should not be me born you. Not be me clean your, your pool. What do you want to tell me now? So, but as the children grow older, we must get to that point where we must allow our children to talk. Because you see, eh, you also want to raise an intelligent child who knows how to talk and stand up for themselves anywhere they are. But if you raise your children intimidated at home, when they go outside, they are not going to suddenly gather boldness because they are outside. The Jewish mother, there's a way they raise their children. I read this, I was shocked. That the Jewish mother, they raise their children. When you are there, you will think they are raising their children to be rebellious. But the children, end, they grow up loving their parents. What is it? They said in the house, in the Jewish home, the children are allowed to argue. The children are allowed to argue. Say, ah, but daddy, this thing you said, don't you think it should be like this? It should be like this. Am I reason this? He said, that is why before a Jewish boy reaches any, he can do business by himself. He can fend for himself. He can, he can represent himself. But the way we raise our children this way, children are meant to be seen, not to be heard. Okay? So at the end of the day, we raise children that they don't have boldness to speak up for themselves. So it's it's uh, something that uh, we need to learn more, okay, and do more of, okay? Even us, we are a bit guilty of that, okay? But it's something that we, that's why we are learning, right? Uh -huh, to do more. But if you are in a home where your parents are like that, don't go and say, Daddy, you need to call master class because you know, you don't even know what to do. When they beat you, finish it. Eh? No call my name more. Uh -huh. So if you are in that kind of home, again, it depends on your age. Uh -huh. Where you can call your parents, your mom or your dad, depending on uh, who you are closer with, and say, Daddy, Daddy. And it depends on the relationship. I look my age now. Sometimes I still get wisdom to know where to talk. Then it becomes, oh, really? Then back and forth and that thing is corrected. Yes. Praise God. The second one here is from um, Proverbs 12, verse 18, which talk about thoughtless words. Is it um, for my mom, she would say, it's a matter of the message I am giving to you. Me now, I like, I, I read meanings most times to words that you say to me. It may be that you are correcting me, but the means at which you are using to correct me may get me offended. But to her, she feels, okay, it's not... It's true that I did it wrong. So whatever means I choose to correct you, it's right. For me, I'm not, I don't take it like that. That's how it's supposed to be. Okay. Now, uh, during my communication class, I have one question I used to ask. I said, meanings are not in words. Meanings are in people. Discuss. Start to talk. Meanings are not in words. Meanings are in people. What does that mean? Do you know that when you are communicating with somebody, eh, 
It is not what you are saying. Most times that the person is hearing. Many times uh, the person will bring into that communication experience all their former experiences. There's an example I normally give my students. So look at this girl, Tina. She wants to get married. Engaged to this guy for some time. Then three months to the wedding, she call the boy, say, I'm busy, I'll call you back. Call the boy, miss the call, you know, go call back and the rest. After some time, just one day, out of the blue, just call the girl, say, I've been thinking about it. I don't think this relationship will work again. He? We've been in this relationship for how many years? Three months to the wedding. You know, you know, go work. She's devastated. Okay, she goes on with her life. Two years down the line, she meets another person, starts this relationship with this guy, and they are doing well, calling back and forth. Then, three months to the wedding. Call this guy. In peace, in peace, I'll call you back. Stop it! Call who back? If you know you are tired, tell me you are tired. Let's forget it. The boy said, why are you shouting? My boss is here. Which boss? Which boss? Then he cuts the phone. The girls are talking. That's all of them. In the evening, he goes to the girls' house. He said, why were you shouting? I was in my, I was with my boss. That, no. That's all, that's all this boy do that time. But this boy honestly was with his boss. Why is she reacting like that? It's not because of what this boy said. It's because of our experience. That's why we say meanings are not in words. Meanings are in people. What people have experienced now come into play. So when you are communicating with somebody, eh, you are not only thinking about yourself, you are thinking also of that person. How did the person also grow up? Because if that is the way the person grew up and was corrected, it will take now a different level of learning to now correct the son differently. Do you understand? So when that correction is coming, don't just think about how it was said. This person, for the major purpose is that this person wants to correct him. Just take that message. Because the person is communicating based on all, am I making sense? Yeah, all where the person is coming from. So, that is why when your love work is strong and you are working in love, there are certain things somebody would say that you would interpret from the spectacle of love. Okay, so okay, this person is doing this for my good. May not have put it the way I like it, but ultimately it's for my good. And you respond accordingly. Okay, are we now saying therefore that if I am the one doing the correction and my son says to me, mommy, the way you talk, or you, by whatever means, I get that communication that I don't like that line of correction. Should I now say, that's how I grew up, that's how we keep correcting you? Is that what we are saying? No, we must also learn to change. We are changing, we are learning. I will never forget something that happened when uh, my daughter was young. So, we were just uh, playing, she's my best friend till today. Do you know that we were just playing back and forth one day? And then she made a statement, and I just reacted. She just said, ah. I took it seriously. She just said, ah, but mommy, I was just joking. That thing cracked my heart. That thing cracked my heart. I misunderstood the angle she was coming from. So the point I'm making is that when somebody is communicating, eh, don't just look at what was said, how it was said. The heart. The, you know, even between husband and wife, eh, sometimes this person just talk this thing for joke. But the interpretation caused quarry. It was, it was supposed to be a joke. But interpretation caused correct. Because meanings are not in words. They are in people. So that is why in um, as growing up in a home, you must get to that point where you just love your parents. Know that whatever they are doing, they want your best. And while God is changing them, you are also growing up. Amen. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. The All last right. one is... It don't do. for, for me, this one is for the marriage. Please. This okay. one is very important. I have a uncle. 
Um, he's not an uh, uncle. An uncle, sorry. He's not. He's, he doesn't come to Morningstar. He's a witness. So we are having a discussion someday, and it was concerning a movie we watched. So he was now like, if his wife should offend him when he gets married, well, about the same age, when he gets married, that he's going to discipline her. So I was like, okay, what means do you devise to discipline your wife? He said, yeah, those privileges that she enjoys, that he's going to deprive them, deprive her from it. So I was like, okay, what's the privilege? He said, like, all oh, those cars. I saw those ones are not privileged, actually, Sha. Then he went, I went for that to ask him, so what if you, you do something wrong? How will your wife now discipline you? So he said, the wife is not to discipline him. That is the Bible that is supposed to discipline him. So he brought out the hierarchy of the church, where he said the man is the head of the wife and God is the head of the, um, of the man. It's, yeah. So it's now... So those are the mindsets that God must correct. Number one, your, ch your wife is not your child. A man is not to discipline his wife. That word, discipline, you know the inside marriage set up. Daddy, am I saying it correctly? Now you're picking. Now you're picking where you want discipline. Oh yeah, kneel down, pick pin. Your, your wife is not your child to be disciplined. Your wife can be corrected, but not disciplined. And daddy has taught this over and over again. No matter what it happened for the house, eh, that the other person did something you didn't like, to withdraw privilege is not uh, our and the right. When daddy taught on rights and privileges, you are a good student. It is not the way. Like one man said, eh, this, this month, this is when you do me, so this month, no shop money. It can't, it can't work. Okay, that's my car. When I buy for you, drop her. What kind of thing is that? That's not a Christian. So that boy is not a Christian. So that's how they do their things there. That's why we are learning. I started by saying we must renew our mind. It is never the way. I mean, all those, uh, the bone straight when I buy for you, hang out. Hang out for them. That khaki, hang out for them. A Christian doesn't do that. A Christian don't do, doesn't do that. And of course, the question you asked him, what of if not the wife? How would the wife discipline the husband? The wife is not even a conversation for you to discipline your husband. How do you want to discipline your husband? Now your boy, now your husband, I've been at your waiting. You can't discipline your husband. And daddy has often said it because women, we have a penchant for this thing. Maybe your husband do something you don't like. You feel that one of the best way to discipline him, when he come near you, say, make everybody hold his side. Everybody day day for this house. No. No. Amen. Where's the second question? Yes. No, no. I'm taking only two questions. One and two. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ma, I want to appreciate you for this talk about words. Thank you very much, Ma. God will bless you. Clap, clap, clap. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, no, 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 say talk. No, easy. If not, let me give you a topic. Come and teach us next Sunday. We will see something. Um, praise the Lord. I thank God because God is good. And I'm yet to be married away very soon. And I'm blessed with persons, friends, girls, women, and boys, and men. Praise the Lord. And many of them um, kind of learn from me. Now, some of them that they want, to, they want to talk to a sister to get married, they will come to me for coaching. I will... Praise the Lord. Please just be patient with me. No, you will, you will round up because yes. we want to Yes, close. let me round up yeah. now. Now, I create words, create messages. Some of them can be many. I give them every day be like that. So those words. Even the girls, I will give their husbands like that. Now, we are, the question I want to ask now is, if I like to do the same to someone that I like, it never favored me. 
Now, here is the question. It's not affecting me in a way that those of them, especially the sisters, they're not using it as a medium to get into me. They are married. Now, I'm thinking of a way to pass such ability to their husbands, to do such to their wives, because me, I can't be doing that to them again, because they are married. I, the way you show appreciation to a married woman, if the husband gets to find that, it can create jealousy. And I wouldn't want that to happen. If he beats you, you uh -huh. get jealousy. So, now, here is a question. Here is the question. How can I... Because one of the measures that I missed that, I said I've tried to give them space. I mean, space. What is the question? The question now, how should I be communicating to my married friends that are opposite that female? Praise God. Very, very important question. Thank you. Can we clap for that question? Yeah. Very important. Please, please listen. No matter how you say you are just a freelancer, nothing day, nothing day, be careful how you communicate with another person's husband. Be careful how you communicate with another person's wife. The devil is a liar. And he's very tricky. Do you know that when that man and his wife just gets more wahala, that is the day the devil will push your hand to send his wife one sweet message. Say, you, talk, you see him now? Nobody, this kind of man are supposed to marry. Do you know that instead of resolving issue with her husband, she'll be thinking of you? That I wish, I wish this kind of man won't get sweet word like this. Now. So, please listen. Those of you that are sisters, let me beg you people. Stay away from people's husband. Don't make another person's husband your friend. If they go office, you cook pepper soup for another person, your husband, put for cooler. For what? As the man just come in office, ah, Mr. James, ah, ah, this is your collar. What it concern you? Leave the collar. Leave the collar alone. If the, husband, the wife not see and feel put on that, you not be wife. Make a day where a day. Don't don't play around people's husbands. Don't, please, I'm telling you, because if you look at Matthew 19, in the message translation, the Bible says, anybody that desecrates God's art, God is coming after that person. He said, marriage is God's art. Anybody that desecrates it, God is coming after that person. You cannot go and be doing sweet, sweet, sweet with one person, your husband, for, for office. Then the time he should use to go and settle with his wife, he don't want to settle again because then they do sweet, 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 sweet for office. God is angry with that kind of behavior. Then you that is a man, and you know that women are emotional. Your own is time seven. Don't, and if a woman comes to you and he begin complain about a wife, no answer. Sorry about the husband. No answer now. Believe what I'm telling you. You are not a counselor. Tell him I may go see him, Pastor. Because as they talk so, eh, I can't do. And so, when we and we and we and we show that her head don't enter shoulder. Likeness don't come. Story don't enter. Don't do it. Don't be a counselor to a married woman. Don't, 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 don't give them words to send to their husband. Make only the the words to your husband is supposed to be from your own heart. Not the one somebody constructs for you. So that construction uh, uh, ministry, when you did, eh? 
You, are, you have resigned from the ministry. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, let them, uh, tell them, say you forget them. Why should you not forget them? You forget them. You forget them. You say, yes, I forget you. Sure. Praise God. Amen. I think we've done good today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Father, we are just so grateful. Thank you for your awesome presence. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you because you keep teaching us your word. Thank you, God, because indeed we are getting better. Our marriages are improving. Our lives are changing. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we, we go, before we take our offense, I would like to share something with you. Um, if In case you are not aware, please, media, give me the Agbaro stuff. So we are starting the Agbaro branch at the end of this month. We are starting the Agbaro branch. Yes. Praise God. And we've already started work. Some work is, uh, is already going on. Our budget for that project is seven, about 7.5 million. Media, on a city final, it's about 7.5 million. And so far, we only have about 1 million that has come in. So that means we still need 6.5.